yes, but we'll try and limit it. Well, basically, you have two quite different kind of people. Freud really started out as trying to be a neurologist. So he wanted to try and understand within the brain, how did the connections go within the brain? How did this hook up with this hook up with this hook up in the brain? And then he actually tried to develop a big scientific project on that, but there just wasn't enough available information he could utilize in terms of knowledge of neurology and so forth, and he gave it up and then later moved over to dreams. Where when we're looking at Jung, he comes from a quite different background. Uh, most all of his family had been ministers, his father, his grandfather, his, on his wife's side had been a lot of ministers. So he came in with a much heavier orientation toward religion in that sense and what was involved with it. Uh, there's been some speculation the fact that Freud was Jewish was also an important concern for him because he always felt sort of ambivalent about his Jewishness and in some ways he tried to sort of uh, not exactly renounce it but to keep his distance from it. And some authors have speculated that this was really a fairly important <coughs> dynamic uh, for him because he wanted to try and sort of prove that he was somebody sort of special. And so there was a strong need on his part to try and uh, indicate just how special he was. He was very concerned that when he had his Irma dream, which supposedly helped him to understand the meaning of dreams, he had this curiosity as to whether someday there would be a tablet set up that on this particular place, Freud at this particular time, finally the whole meaning of dreams was revealed to him. So he had this single-handed event that now the world would come and put a big tablet there to consecrate how his special involvement uh, was. Young, I think probably, if I can remember in one of the writings, wanted to sort of become more of an anthropologist or archaeologist. So again, a big difference between them was Freud had never traveled widely that much. He had gone to Italy a little bit. He had made one trip over to the States here. He and Jung together came over for a brief visit to Clark University. And that was kind of it. Jung had much more wide-ranging curiosity. He had gone down and made some uh, trips to Africa, trying to live with the uh, natives down there. He came over here to the U.S. and went and spent some time out with the uh, cliff dwellers out in the southwest and so forth. He made a trip to India, so he's much more interested in larger kind of arenas as to how did people uh, interact in, in those sort of areas. So Freud was more of a linear thinker, and if we go back with the kind of neurology thing of what nerve is connected to what nerve, that basically is how he came around to working with his dreams, of how one thing was connected to another, to another, to another. And the suggestion I give you in the book is it's, it's almost as if he's doing kind of a ladder. You have association A, which goes to association B to C, and it's kind of this way. For Jung, it's kind of a much more, uh, as Don has broken, kind of a, a ball of string. It, it's all kind of intertwined, and there's all sorts of multiple levels going on in a sense at the same time. So it's very difficult to just pull any one thing out, because as soon as you start to pull the string, you get this and this and this. You don't get, you can't snip out just one little piece of the string. It, it, the whole ball of wax is sort of all. Uh, connected together. So it's a quite different way of uh, looking at dreams. They also had some serious disagreements over the role of the paranormal, where uh, for Freud, he, he was very ambivalent about it. He wrote about five papers, kind of saying if he had his life to live over again, he might do it as a parapsychologist, as a psychical researcher. Then he had several other papers where he discounted that said no, that, that's a bunch of hooey. And he was concerned about if you got too much involved with it, it could hurt 
follow psychoanalysis. And he was very protective about psychoanalysis. It was his baby, and he wanted to make sure that nobody messed with it and contaminate it because that he wanted that to be his lasting legacy in terms of uh, psychoanalysis. Where for Jung, he actually did his dissertation. His uh, niece, I believe it was, was a psychic. And so he did his dissertation on trying to do some investigations about her psychic ability. So they had in their correspondence back and forth some uh, big difficulties in terms of reconciling those. They eventually split because Freud was really pushing very heavily the idea of sexuality and that that was the mainspring as well as involved. Jung was basically saying that sexuality was relevant but not to also many, many other things besides just that. So they were fairly close. Freud had kind of appointed Jung to be his uh, successor to carry on his traditions, but then they had this uh, breakup and once uh, they split, then they never had any further contact after that, although I think Freud still was somebody that uh, Jung admired because he was a, a man of some considerable uh, influence. Now the ways they worked with people, again, were quite different. Freud would have the patient come in, sit down, I mean lay down on the couch, and he would be over here not facing them. So there's an entire sense of isolation. The, the, the patient is here, you're here, and you don't see them. They don't see you. So that you really got a kind of a, an invisible screen between the two of you so that you're really kind of isolated. When you would work with people, it would always be sitting up and you're facing them, talking just as if you were having a cup of coffee. And it was a much more uh, social kind of thing. Jung was much more interested then in trying to, he had a different kind of sequence. It wasn't a sequence within an individual dream, but was concerned about the general upthrust of your life. So that for him, because of his background with uh, religious issues and spiritual issues, uh, basically kind of came to the conclusion that we went through stages, we kind of, marriage maybe along those lines, getting your career early on, and then the critical thing was by midlife. So from his point of view, until you got to be about 50 years old, you really weren't in much of a position to know what it was all about. You kind of had to have had kids yourself, see your kids have kids see the seasons go, and then you could kind of get the big picture of the cycling around through life, through your life, your kid's life, and etc. So you could get this much bigger cosmic view. That was not of any interest to, to Freud. Freud was more of a recessive one in that you got to a certain point in life, and then you kind of stayed in what he called a repetition compulsion. You would just keep acting out again, over and over your early childhood conflicts. And so for him, all of the important things were those childhood conflicts, which frequently then dealt with sexual issues. For Jung, it was more you were going onward and upward. So he was saying at midlife, you would kind of reach a crisis. It would be sort of a spiritual crisis for you. You would somehow have to figure out in your own way so it wasn't any particular, this religion was preferred to that one, but that you had to get into alignment with all of the larger forces in the universe. And unless you could do that, and in order to do it, you had to have some sort of larger kind of cosmic view of things. And so that you're kind of continually always going onward and upward. His analogy might be the dream of an acorn would be to become a mighty oak. So that within that acorn, everything is possible. If you've got the water, you've got the sunlight, that little acorn would spring, grow up, get the trunk, get the branches, get the leaves, and so forth. So everything was within that. All the potentiality was waiting to come forth if you could just nourish it through your life experiences.